all right fam so we are back at it again with another crazy video now this is vince ellison exposes the truth behind diversity equity inclusion and abortion all right so without further ado man if we go ahead and get straight into this banger banger video without further ado let get it let go Hi, uh, my question is on DEI, particularly in the airline industries. I'm sure you've been following after the whole Reagan batch of FFA agents yeah. retired. Obama decided to diversify the FFA. We've seen a lot of problems from that, including two planes almost colliding and basically having to roller coaster away from each other, as well as United Airlines um, had 80% of its new flight class being women or mm. people of color compared to 96% typically. Um, anyway, we've seen a lot of issues um, in the airline industries um, lately because of this and it's gotten to the point where people go onto a plane and if they see a woman pilot they see a black pilot they see basically any pilot that is not a white male they're starting to worry about the competency of the pilot how do we as a society overcome that because obviously we want to be respectful of people's races we don't want to assume that someone is only in that position because of their color but also we need to worry about our safety and this is another issue that DEI is causing is it's causing people to look at people who are in positions of power and of authority and have you know negative thoughts about that how do we overcome that and try to not see people who are in good positions as incompetent because of their race due to dei we have to get the black community to sign off on it say that you know just like the nfl and the and the nba we don't need your handouts we don't need your crumbs we can make it on our own and that comes from a conversation that we have to start having in the black community because right now we're still on this tip we want reparations we're still oppressed we're still all of that and what i do is i confront them with this and i confront them with the truth i say how can you be oppressed if you are a child of of, of god and an heir of jesus christ they can't answer that question I, I i i convince them that after 50 years of affirmative action you're still at the bottom so what good is it doing you it's not a hard sale but too few people are trying to sell it especially black people to other black people so it's, it's, a, it's a sale that we're going to have to make, but it's also us looking at uh, companies that um, allow it and, 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 not, and not buy from them, politicians that support it and not vote for them. Um, I think that right now, as you know, there's a pushback on it because uh, people are getting so angry at, about DEI. Yeah. A, lo a lot of Fortune 500 com companies are starting to just say, we're done with it, we're tired of it, we're not going to use it because they see it is condescending and it does not work. Again, I can look a black brother in the eye and tell him, so you're still begging for the crumbs to fall from the white man's table, huh? And he has to respond to me. And he knows that he has to respond to me like a man, but he can't because that's what he's doing. And uh, I, 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 I tell him, you know, you're still a beggar. I mean, ante up, be a man. I respect the thief more than I respect the beggar. Stand up, take what you want instead of begging for it. Because right now, as Frederick Douglass said, after he whooped his slave master and left, he said that um, a man without power, that human, that human dignity is constructed where a man, though they cannot respect a helpless man. He, he can be pitied for a while, but only until strength rises up in him. And right now, the pity is gone. Black people in America are gonna to have to start competing. And when they compete, they do well. What did our Bible say? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Go out and compete. And this whole ideology of when Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream that one day I will not be judged by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character. Here's the thing. You will be judged by the content of your character. It is unavoidable. To think that uh, the color of your skin is going to be the thing that's going to judge you in America, that is a lie. It will be your character. Even if somebody calls you the N-word, how you respond to that is going to determine how that relationship goes bro that is a freaking fact that is a freaking fact you know how many times i talk to people in real life okay <laughs> i gotta mention that because I, I am a content creator i just besides you guys online you know how many times i talk to people in real life and i tell them everything in life is based off your character you you think people like man you so you don't care if a white person come up to you and call you in word bro the words from a white person's mouth, it doesn't it, it doesn't offend me. It doesn't hurt me for them to call me the N-word. Why? Because, bro, you as a black person called me the N-word more than a white person ever called me the N-word. I have gotten called the N-word from 98% of black folks. I ain't never been called the N-word from a white person. Never. 
Never. So if they did just happen to say the N word out of the blue, it wouldn't it wouldn't even shock me as much because my own people call me the N word so much. So you saying as a white man, oh what's up my N or a man you N, like, it wouldn't even shock me as much. I'm like dang, I mean hey that's crazy. It wouldn't shock me as much because I got my own people calling me the N word twenty four seven, and then they say oh they they try to make all this justification like the thing with the black community is that. You can call them out on something, like the N-word. Oh, if the N-word is so bad, why do we always say it to each other? You can call them out on that, and they will always find something, a solution or something to justify why they say the N-word. And it just never, it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. You know what I'm saying? But everything is on your character. How you respond, like I, like I he said, how you respond, that's what people are looking at, bro. That's what people are looking at. When a police officer pull you over, how are you responding to the authority of an officer? An officer tell you one thing. How do you respond to that? You know what I'm saying? How do you respond to that? You you make yourself look like a fool because of the way you respond. Because so many people in America don't have the self control to be like, you know what? Is it even worth it? That that's how. That's what I think about all the time. The, like the only way I would ever get into a confrontation with someone is if they not if they literally like what what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not offend. But if they actually come at my family or come at me any type of way, just for the lack of vocabulary, I cannot think of the word. But if they come at me or my family any type of any given way, put what well, there we go. Put my put my wife life in danger. Put my life in danger. Put my future kids life in danger. My mom life like they put any of my family life in danger or put my wife put my life in danger. That's the only way I can honestly have a conversation with someone to stand up. But the words or anything like that, bro, it's like is it even worth it? Is it even worth it degrading my character so you can get a reaction out of me? Because that's what some people really want. They want a reaction out of you. They want to see how you're going to react to this. So they're going to get under your skin to get a reaction out of you to get you all fired up. You know what I'm saying? Like, people be at work talking crazy. And I'm like, bro, is it even worth it for real, bro? We at a place of business. You really think I'm finna go off on you in a place of business, bro? Like, you want to see me get fired. You want to see my downfall. That's what people want. They want to see the downfall of other men, of other women. They want to see your downfall. So they're going to get you to a point where it may it, it may have other people look at you in some in some odd given way. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want to get to a point where other people looking at you weird, too. That's how I'm trying to say it. But anyways, let's finish. Not being judged by the color of my skin. What's wrong with the color of my skin? Judge me by it. Underestimate me at your peril. Judge me by it. Vince Ellis is black. And what? You gonna think I'm gonna be walking around America looking at some white racist and excuse me, boss, don't judge me by the color of my skin. Never me. It was condescending, it was disrespectful. It set us back a hundred years. Made us believe that something was wrong with the color of our skin and we had to apologize for it or, or, or dream for a day that we won't be judged by it. And then when you deal with the Christian concept from Jesus Christ who says specifically, you are not to be concerned about how man views you. You're supposed to be concerned about how I view you and how you view yourself. The biggest trick they ever played on us, or not that they saw that we were inferior, is that they made us believe that we were inferior. And who taught us that? It was our own people that taught us that. Who made you hate yourself from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet? That's what Malcolm X asked. It was the people on the left marching, begging, getting slapped around. Don't care how you feel about me. If you don't like me, that's your problem. You put your hands on me, you have another one. So again, we have to start reteaching the whole concept of Americanism and masculine Christianity to say, look, I earn what I get. If I find out that you've given it to me, I don't want it. I'm a man, I earn it. Instead, they started the welfare state where they, oh, and something else you guys need to know about abortion. I'm sorry, I wanted to put that in. The first recipient of, 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 the, of the Margaret Sang Award, y'all know who that was? Anybody know? Martin Luther King Jr., 1966. Yeah. For helping us help abortion clinics. Yeah, the black preacher was part of the Negro Project. That's what my book, Iron Triangle, talked about. The black preacher, the black politician, the black civil rights organizer, they are conduits between white liberals and poor black people, and they keep them under control. So that's the thing. You got it. They have to keep black people believing that they're inferior, that they need them to make it in America, and as long as they keep them there, 
they will keep them completely under control. So the counter to that is teaching them the Christ, their Christian faith again and teaching them that you're more than a conqueror, that you're an heir of Jesus Christ, you're a child of God. No one is superior to you. Nothing can beat you. You will go through a brick wall if you need to. They will, you cannot be stopped. And when they hear that message, I gave the sermon last Sunday, Sunday before this last, at uh, World Overcomers Church in Memphis, Tennessee. 12,500 member church. Been one of the biggest black congregations in America. People were taking, conservatives were taking um, bets on how long I was going to be on there before they killed me because they thought they were going to just kill me. I'm walking in the lion's den. So not, no, my people, I'm not going to have a problem. Walked in the church, got five standing ovations. You can see it online. Why? Same exact message. You're an heir of Jesus Christ. You're a child of God. You're not inferior to anyone. If someone even acts like they're superior to you, you're supposed to say, show me how superior you are. Try me. That's the message. That's what we tell them. You have to say it. I have to say it. When they tell you that they're free or they need DNI, DEI, you ask the question, hey, man, are you a child of God? You're a Christian? Yes, I am. Then why are you begging for my help? And that's how you change them. So whenever they come up to you again, you ask them that, okay? Christian, Muslim, Jew, ask them the same question. Is God your father? Yes, then you don't need my help. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, man, the smile on the face, bro, was a mic drop, bro. <laughs> the smile on the face was a mic drop, fam. Nah, he just went off. He just snapped, okay? Literally just snapped. Fam, it is so true. You know what I'm saying? I never thought about it like that. Like, me personally, like I, like I said in my last video, like, I never looked at race. I don't look at things as a... I don't look at I don't look at everything as race. You know what I'm saying? Like everything to me is not a white and black situation. You know what I'm saying? I look at the fact that there's only one race, that's the human race. We all bleed the same. I don't care about the, the race of your skin. Like I don't care if you're white, black, or Spanish, Chinese, Puerto Rican, Jew. I don't care. I truly don't care. I, I say it all the time that everything in life is a choice and you choose where you want your life to go. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that, not only did God give you the authority to to be able to walk on this earth and to do the things he have called you to do but if god calls you to a place that may seem impossible to get to for because you're you're because you're a certain race that shows how much faith you actually have in the father yourself because again if god is calling you to a place no man nobody can stop that plan that he has for you he's god he's the creator of everything so the fact that he calls you to a place and you're scared to even go into that place because of the color of your skin or because you think, oh, I'm going to be canceled. I'm going to be this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Like, no. If you are truly a child of God and you truly have faith, best believe no one can ever stop the plan that God has for your life. It don't matter how much people may say, oh, you're black or you're white or you're this or you're that. If it's God's plan for your life, trust and believe me, you're going to succeed in whatever it is that God is calling you to do. You know what I'm saying? You just got to believe and trust that. Like, with this whole we are oppressed and this and that, like how he said, yeah, bro, I like how he said it. He said it the best. How can you be a person when you're a child of God? We all child of God. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that y'all throw around this, oh, oh, black people are oppressed or this and that, or, you know, it take us longer to get to, to where we're trying to go in life and it takes white people so quick. Where did y'all come up with this logic at? The fact that you think it takes white people just a second to get, to get, in, to get in the door on things, like, bro, it's plenty of black folks that, the parents work so hard so their kids will have a little easier route. But then you got people who actually like their parents worked hard, but then the kids also had to work hard because their parents wasn't just giving, 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 giving. Because again, success is not given, but it's earned. If you want success in this life, you have to work 10 times harder to, in order to achieve that success. You know what I'm saying? I truly, I truly stand on that. Like, the fact that you want to be successful, well, guess what? You got to put in the, the leg work to get to be successful. You have to. You know what I'm saying? It's just not, oh, you're white? All right. Boom. You're successful. Like, that's not how the game works. That's not how life works. Oh, you're black? Oh, boom. You're poor. That's not how it works, but that's what society wants you to believe. They want to keep black people down. They want to keep the fact that, oh, white people so up here. But in reality, bro, at the end of the day, we all right here. We all below. You know what I'm saying? Because, again... In today's economy, 
look, we all trying to work and strive to just create a living for ourselves. So we're all right here. We're all right here, bro. You got a few white people right here. You got a few black people right here. At the end of the day, majority of society, we're right here, bro. Still trying to figure things out. It's not about race. It's not, you know what I'm saying? The fact that y'all think that white people is just so, oh, man, white people this and white people that. They they rich. They want this. They did that. Like, no, bro. That's not always the case when it comes to white people. But it's black people that's also rich. You know what I'm saying? It's, but, but guess what those black people have to do? They have to work hard. It don't matter how hard they, it don't matter how much they have to go through to get there at the end of the day they got there like when you on your journey bro you're not thinking about how long it's taking you to get to a certain situation i mean to a certain destination all you're doing is you're enjoying the journey and you just you're enjoying everything that may come with the journey you know what i'm saying it may be a little small blessings here small blessings there or it may be things that tear you down on along the way but you're enjoying every piece of it and then when you get to the destination now you're relaxing now you're now you're you you're reaping the benefits of your labor you know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about when it comes to being coming successful, bro. Enjoying the enjoying the journey, bro. Ain't nobody thinking about, oh, damn, that white man got there faster. Like, no, bro, that's not what – I'm pretty sure that's not what people are thinking about, bro. People are in their own lane thinking about their own race. That's what we need to do is we need to stay in our lane, stay in our race. Simple as that. Stay in your race. The moment you keep looking at everybody else is the moment you're going to fall off on the line of your race. You know what I'm saying? You're going to find yourself all the way in, in last place because you too focused on the next person by, uh, the next person on the side of you trying to get ahead of you. Like, come on, bro. Let's just really think about all these things and take all these things into consideration. But anyways, man, y'all let me know what y'all think about this video in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. It's been your boy, Depend. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.